and Gorato Pera. Yes. Gorato Pera. Okay. Psalm 97. Can somebody read the Bible for me or I'll read myself? Psalm 97, verse number 10. Is anyone reading? Yea, that love the Lord hates evil. He preserveth the souls of his servants. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. He preserves the souls of what? Of his godly people. Of his saints. Of his servant. Of his godly people. Of his faithful ones. So we are talking uh, we are on point number seven. I this one. The promise of divine protection. The promise of divine protection. Mungaiwaka promise kuchenge tawalake. So there is a promise, a divine protection. Mungaiwaka promise kuchindi chenge tawalake. Right? And um, and um, Vanu, Ima Ago Vacha Cheket Kwana Mangari Uchao Nakuti Vanu Fanaku Invoka That Divine Protection Through Prayers Vanu Fanaku Namata And Invoke That Divine Protection Psalm 121 my about 121. I'll read from verse number one. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So, but the Lord, where do? He will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keeps you will not slumber. Are you getting this? Yes. Verse 4. Behold, he that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. So, which means God does not sleep. Kuna kufunza mbunzo kuti. Saka kunenga tino koti le roo tino tino lata here. Your scripture. He does not sleep. So, if God does not sleep in heaven, do you think we shall sleep? I don't think so. Verse 5. The Lord is your keeper. Who is your keeper? The Lord. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade upon your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. So the Lord keeps you during the day, and he keeps you during the night. So you are totally protected. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you see that? Yes. Verse number seven. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Say it after me. Say the Lord. The Lord shall preserve me shall preserve from all evil. From all evil. He shall preserve. He shall preserve my soul. my soul. Now, the word preserve there is the word protect. Mm -hmm. Verse number five. Eight. Verse number eight. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Imagine, God shall protect you as you go out and he will protect you as you come in. Isn't that amazing? Huh? Amen. 
So which means you are protected by the Lord. Amen. Psalm 140. Psalm 140. Verse number one. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil men. Oh, so there is an evil man. And David says, deliver me from an evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Oh, so there is an evil man and there is a violent man. So imagine that. God says, um, David says, preserve me from the evil man. Number one. And number two, preserve me from the violent men. Waka mbona a violent man. A violent man, munu anofara kuita she fight. Munu anofara noise. Unoisi haku maraino kwa tino gara, kune ma violent men aka wandisa. Are you with me? You know, sometimes ulimu kombi. And, and and somebody will just start a fight with you. Kondadi. That's a violent man. David says, deliver me from a violent man. Verse number four. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Oh, so there is a violent man. There is an evil man. And there is a wicked man. It sounds the same, but these are degrees of evil. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent men who have proposed to overthrow my goings. Now, let, let's read it in, in amplified version. I want you to see it. Amplified version. Verse number four. Keep me, O oh Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent men who have proposed to thrust aside my steps. You see that? Now let's go to NIV. Same Psalm 140, verse number four. NIV. Look at this. Keep me, O oh Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from men of violence who plan to trip my feet. He is making a prayer. He says, Protect me from somebody who is planning to trip my feet. He says, Preserve me from that man. What a prayer! What a prayer. So God wants to preserve you. He wants to protect you. Are you with me? Amen. Now let's let's go to Psalm Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Are you still here? Yes. Are you hearing me well? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. <coughs> So this is divine protection. We are going back to um, to King James, right? From verse one, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now the question is, what is the secret place of the Most High? Have you ever asked yourself? What is the secret of the most? Don't don't turn down and throw it please. What is the secret place of the most high? Have you asked yourself that? Huh? Matthew chapter number six. Matthew six. Verse number six. But thou when thou prayest, 
enter into your closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to your father which is in secret. Do you see the secret, the secret place now? Do you see it now? Yes. So, what is the secret place? It's a place of what? Of prayer. Jesus said it when you pray. Get into your closet. When you get into your closet, shut your door. So he did not say, leave the door open. Shut your door. Then he says, pray to your father, which is in secret. So he says, create a secret place. Because your father is in secret also. So secret plus secret, it means the secrecy of God. Get it now? Yes. Then he says, pray to your father which is in secret. And your father which sees in secret. So people don't see things in secret. But your father sees things in secret. Do you see that? Yes. And your father which sees things in secret shall reward you openly. So God is calling you and I into the secret place. This is where you have protection. Psalm 91. Go back. You know, for many years, when I was uh, at Yatsume College, growing up, going to college, use it, I wondered, what is the secret place of the Most High? I used to preach it many times. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high who would caught it and caught it. But what was it? Until the Lord says, let me show you. <laughs> so, the secret place of the most high is a place of prayer. He says, that one who dwells in prayer shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Verse 3. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fallen and from the noisome pestilence. Now, for you to understand what He's talking about in um, verse number 3, let's go to Amplified Version. And, and you get what He says here. Verse number 3, Amplified. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fallen and from the deadly pestilence. What is the deadly pestilence? Huh? He's talking about the deadly diseases. So he says, surely shall deliver you from the sin of the fallen and from the deadly diseases. The, the, the fallen is these are dangerous. Amen. Right? Yes. Verse 4. He shall cover you with the feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and battle. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flies by day. You see that? So there are arrows that fly by day. There are terrors that come by night. Now for the pestilence that walks in darkness. What is pestilence? Diseases. So when we are going to wear it, we have to farm our seed. And he says he will protect you from the deadly diseases that walk in darkness. Yeah. Now for the destruction that will wasted at noonday. Amen. He's talking about accidents. Mm -hmm. He's talking about murders, destructions, evils. Verse 7. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Mm -hmm. He now tells you that thousands upon thousands of evil, wicked people, wicked things, demons, devils, who come but they will not come near you. Verse 
8. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation, there shall no evil before you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. There shall no evil before you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. So there shall be no evil in your house. There shall be no plague in your house Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I saw a video of a pastor who was preaching. And he fell down while preaching and he died in church. I just remembered. Who died in church? And I may have sense of fear. They died in church. At the pulpit. They fell down. And they died. This pastor was preaching in the same way Ananias and Sapphira died. He also died. What was his crime? Hmm. Only God knows. Some said it was BP. Some said it was whatever. Cardiac arrest. But he died. I declare upon your life, it shall not be your portion. Amen. You shall not die the same way. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says, no evil shall come near your dwelling. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Bible says, no plague shall come near your dwelling. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There shall be no evil before you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Verse 11. So he shall keep his angels charge over you to keep you in how many ways? In all your ways. So everyone here has got an angel that keeps you in all your ways. Amen. Everyone here has got what? An angel. An angel that keeps you in all your ways. As you go to the right, angels are going with you. As you go to the left, angels are going with you. As you go up and down, angels are going with you. You. They keep you in all your ways. Rest off. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest thou dash your foot against a stone. Oh God. He says, These angels will bear you up in their hands, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. He is saying, So that you will not fall into accidents. So from today, all your angels are activated and no accident shall be for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will drive to wherever you want without falling into any accident. Amen. Because these angels, they will bear you up in their hands. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Verse 18. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Did you listen to this? Yes. Did you see this? Yes. Huh? Yes. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. You know, some people, they didn't get it. You see, in Luke chapter number 10, verse number 19, he says, Behold, I give unto you power to treat on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Yes. So here, in First Peter 5, verse number 8, he says, you know what he says there? He says, um, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a rolling lion, walks about seeking whom to devour. So in verse number 13, Psalm 91, he is talking about the devil and his demons. Amen. He says, you shall tread upon the lion and the adder. These are types of demons. 
the young lion and the dragon. You see, devils, evil spirits. Thou shalt tremble under feet. You know, in Romans it says, the Lord shall put Satan under what? Your feet. Verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. Now prayer comes back. You know, verse number one, it says, the secret place is what? Prayer. Verse number 15, it says, he shall call upon me. That's prayer. And I will answer you. I will be with him in trouble. Oh, so God did not say you will not be in trouble. He says, I will be with you in trouble. So trouble will come, but he will be with you. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Oh, imagine that. God says, I will deliver you from the trouble and I will honor you. What is, what is it to be honored by the Lord? Verse 16. With long life, will oh, I satisfy you? With how many life? With long life. With long life, will oh, I satisfy you? And show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is divine protection. Oh, yes. So if you are not satisfied with long life, it means you lack the divine protection. Today, I invoke divine protection upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You shall be protected in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. No evil shall come to your house. Amen. No evil shall defeat you. Amen. No evil shall destroy you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's move. Number eight. The promise of divine provision. The promise of divine what? Provision. Genesis 22. Verse number 8. The promise of divine provision. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. God will do it. Will provide. So Abraham knew God as a provider. God will provide. Abraham agai ne manawake. Vari vaviri. Vari mukomo. Vajeda mno sacrifice. Mana do ut baba. Why yachu iru kupi ku sacrifice and sui wona. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide. Now, that sense that was in Abraham that made him to believe God as a provider is what you want. Amen. When Abraham, I said, Isaac, but out. I don't buy any bag, but I'm a teacher, so I'm not going then the angel of the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham, stop. The Lord has provided a lamb for that sacrifice. Now imagine God provided at the last minute. Sometimes it's over. God provides. He is the provider. Hallelujah. Amen. David said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He provides. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Verse number 9 and verse number 10. Okay, um, let, 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 let's, let's, let's begin um, from verse number 5. So that we understand the context. Matthew 10 from verse number 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. 
but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as he go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely he have received, freely give. Verse 9. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses. He says, carry not money. Verse 10. No script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staffs. For the workman is worthy of his meat, of his food. Now, now imagine this. Um, can somebody control these kids? They're making a lot of noise. I, 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 imagine this. Imagine this. You are, you are with Jesus. And he says, you guys, I want to send you to Chagutu, Kadoma, Kwekwe, and Bulawai. And they're going two by two. But as you go, carry no money. Not even a bank account. Carry nothing. Just leave and go. Preaching along the way. Don't go to the Samaritans. Don't go to the ways of the Gentiles. Just go to the lost sheep. In other words, um, in our context, you can say, don't go to Christians. Just to go to heathens, hallows, prostitutes, thieves, robbers, murderers, go to them and preach. Carry no money. Don't carry two suits or two shirts or two tunics. Don't carry anything. Just to go the way you are. Preach. And as you go preaching, you shall be provided everything that you need. Imagine such kind of faith. These apostles, they were not leading a church. They had no church. They were going to people who don't know God. They were going to people who don't care about God. And they expected to be given provisions from those people. He says, go and preach. And you receive provisions. We are failing to believe this kind of ministry today. We are failing. We are too afraid. These disciples did not question Jesus. They just went. They were not afraid. They began preaching. Were they accepted in every city? No, they were not. In some cities, they were not accepted. And Jesus had an answer for that. Verse number 10, 11. And in whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and they abide till you go thence. And when they come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But it if it, is, if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when they depart out of that house or sit, shake off the dust of your feet. Then I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Imagine there were cities that did not accept them. And Jesus said, dust your feet and leave. Are you getting this? Amen. But they believed in God who provides. So God is a provider. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Verse number 19. Verse number 19. For I know that this shall tend to my salvation through your prayer. And the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So there is a supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. 
So as we pray, as we seek the face of God, there is a supply. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is the supplier. Chapter 4, same book of Philippians 4, verse number 19. Look at it. But my God, which God is he talking about? Huh? The Holy Spirit. But my God, the Holy Spirit, shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So Paul introduced a principle, a law in the spirit of divine provision. My God shall supply all your need, not some needs, but all the needs. Amen. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So, here we see that God has got the ability of providing. He shall provide. Which means he is able to provide. Amen. All we need to do is to believe that he is able to do it. If we don't believe it, we will not eat it. Remember that um, army captain, Mazuba Elisha, Musonja, where we are, Musamaria Metanzara, no man, Elisha, Jitiman Wana, Muchateka Flower Nisheke, Chimbacha Zara, Musonja, you are one of Jama Tosio, Madungesa Pera, which you are, but all Jama Navao. Elijah said, because you did not believe it, you shall see it, but you will not eat it. The men saw it the following day, and it was a trampled under feet by horses, and he died at the gate. Are you with me? Amen. He died. So, if you don't believe in divine provisions, you will die as it were. In other words, you will not see it. You will not eat it. You will not enjoy it. Amen. So you have to believe in divine provision. Amen. No matter what. Amen. You have to believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus 16. <clears throat> Verse number 11. So that's 16, verse number 11, verse number 16. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the memories of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At even he shall eat flesh, and in the morning he shall be filled with bread. And he shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at, at the even the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning the Jew lay round about the host. And when the Jew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, they lay a small round thing, as small as the whole frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. For they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and honor for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. Now imagine that when you farm you range in wilderness, and you are in any supermarket, I'm not gonna any bad musica. Musango, Mone Jecha, Muruku Pisa. And in the midst of the desert, the Lord provided quails, Juta, and manna, that's bread. 
And for 40 years, God was providing to these people. And they were eating in the morning and in the evening. Every day. Imagine that. You see, I want you to see this the ability of this God. Amen. He has got that ability that he is a spirit. But he provides physical bread and physical meat. Yes. To people who are, in, who are hungry. If God could do it, what stops him from providing to us today? I want you to see that our faith mm -hmm. is either too small or we are not using our faith. Yeah. God is the provider. Mm -hmm. And he provided. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to choose to believe in God who provides. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Pakawia, why? They are providing one Maruna Abraham. They are married us when we are here. I saw a moon. I'm going to ask our yard. I did the name of the way to run. So I think I'm going to ask our yard. No, Isaac believed. Amen. Pakawia, Zuta. Nichingo, Mana. I want to put the shop of it. No, just like today, people question when miracle money happens. So, have a good money. Because you just have a good commander about it. Is God not able to provide? He is able to provide. So we must not question him. We must believe Amen. in him. Amen. Are you getting me? Yes. Sometimes we see a plan. You have to pray to God the provider. So you say, Holy Spirit, you are the provider. Provide for me. Don't rely on people. They will disappoint you. Not everyone is mature. Are you getting me? Yes. Not everyone is what? Yes. Some people, they promise. And they will not meet up. They will not meet their promises. But if you rely on the Holy Spirit... You will not be disappointed. You know, let me tell you a little story. Um, when I was growing up in faith, you know, <laughs> we had a church in, we had a church in um, Neosho, in Gwem. <laughs> and that time, things were, things were tight. <laughs> things were so tight. But I was growing up in faith and planting churches and believing God for provisions. So there's, there was a certain girl, can I say a lady, a single mother, in Bulawayo. <coughs> her name was Patience. I want to say her surname. Her name was Patience. So she, she called me. She said, Man of God, I've read about you, blah, 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 and I want you to come to blah, 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 blah. And I said, okay, what's up in blah, blah, She said, I heard Muneku said, I heard Muneku said, yes. So I said, all right, I want to give you this kind of money. And the money was good money that time. Several hundreds. And I said, what do you do? And in a business, Ramon, 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 business, so, 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 so. Oh, no, Karakubi. And she told us a fancy area. Masamba, very blue. 
And I said, all right. The guy told me, I'll come. She said, no, 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 we don't need all that. Just to come. In fact, I'm not much care. Then I said, ah, I got my son who was going to come. So I said, that looks like a good idea. In fact, when I tie, you could be a movie. No, I am a credit. I actually never do this. Never had a toy crusade. Oh, there are no more guys. Guys, did you hear that? So I said, ah, so that's like a man. No, but I'm credit. I'm married. So we are criticizing the brother. I end up with AFM. But I'm a tati. I know I'm not going to have a poster. That's that. To find a print a poster. To try and marry us. 250. I'm going to find a print. And I would have done what I would have done to do one. But to credit and marry someone. Right. But I know I'm a damn bad. But yes, I have balance. Don't bother about the print. I don't blow it. I don't drive around blow it. That's why I blow it. Where I put that's why I put my bag. Are you listening? Yes. That's why I put my bag. I don't care. You are the one. I don't pity what you can't afford. I got good food. That's why I got good food. You are the the number one. That's why I buy the number one. That's why I buy the number one. That's why I get the best of the day. Right. I'm not just talking to you. So we went to our mind lofo and we stayed there for the night. The following day, we said, Alpha, the, the third day. We call Jay Alpha. And don't forget mascot, mascot, mascot. Iya, phone yet was unreachable. Aba mota ni dress and funga ni five liters. Tuto zoka ku kweru and arani. Aba la ni waka mira mari zam. Aba due today. She never gave us a cent. The last time she saw me when I was in Blawayo, she said, "Man of God, you have to relocate from Arad and come to Blawayo. I will pay the full house for you, and I will pay for the fee. In fact, school fees for your kids, no matter what, transfer, and I'll pay all the uh, everything. Not only that, ask my wife. She said, don't say this. I'm telling you, yes, sir. Frank, you never sure." <laughs> Suspension, never oil, everything. Tell me how much is it? We told them. She said, right. My son is coming to another t- the, the following week and she'll bring all the money. My son will come and pay. I was like, what? I will not take my car to the car. If he ever won't carry on. Do you know what I'm saying? That following Saturday, the son came, no nothing. You see, people will promise and they will not meet the promises. But rely on this Holy Spirit. You will never disappoint you. Hallelujah. So your, your trust must be in God, not in people. Like, like, um, we, we are raising Marie new thing, right? Yes, then some people promised, yes, and some sent their promises, yes. but there is a particular one mm. in the morning. I said, Shokaro, what are you all by this time? Mm. Okay, you know, my Nero. Six. When I contact you, six. Like, no, no. I'm driving now. Eight o'clock. Nina she can do mirror. You have to send it. Okay, mm. Eight. You didn't send. Now it's later on. Nineteen. I'll have to mirror again. Now, Mausena, I am asking you. I'm going to have a leaders meeting. Mm. Where's the money? I 
Yes. You, 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 you remember Lot when Abraham was coming from Iran with his nephew Lot going to the promised land. Yes. Now Lot was now a big man because he had a lot of cattle. Mm-hmm. And Abraham was also a big short because he had a lot of cattle. He was rich. Lot was rich. And there was a fight between the headsmen of Lord and those of Abraham. So Abraham said, okay, Lord, we, we can't fight. We can't fight. Choose where you want to go. And I'll go the other side you did not choose. Then Lord looked around and he saw green land Kusodom Mutakunanza we pasta. Yakita green kudaya to a kumana bunguru shetel. Amen. Then he says to Abraham, I'm going to this side. Abraham, that's fine. Go. And Lord went there. But Lord did not know that in the plans of God, Sodom was on number one for destruction. It was one the plan for destruction. But I had a plan out. I'm going to destroy Sodom. And Lot was going there where God wants to destroy. But he did not know. Because green and And Lot went there. What happened? God destroyed Sodom. In fact, first of all, Lot was raided. By five kings, enemy kings, and they took him and all the cattle and all the wives and kids, and they went with him. Abraham went to rescue Lot and brought him back. Lot Ashan said, Break with the ten of Sodom. He said, Ah, Dara Metaba Sandabo, she decided. He went back to Sodom. <laughs> he never asked God, Why was in Sodom? Now two angels came with God. And they had a conversation with Abraham, Genesis 18. And God said, I'm going to destroy Sodom. God said, What? Abraham said, What? Yes. My nephew is there. Then Abraham began to intercede for Lot and for Sodom. 
God said, if I find five righteous people, I won't destroy it. And God could not find five. And he ran down fire and destroyed all the pastelent and everything in Sodom. But Lot was spared. His wife became a pillar of salt. You know the story? Yes. So sometimes in life, you may see a guy driving a Mercedes Benz. And you say, oh boy, this is the man. Mm. Oh boy, Oh, you may hear a phone call. Hello, Ruba. Is it Ruba Russia? Yes. Ruba, we have got a very good offer here. We pay 5000 a month. Ah. <laughs> Quickly without thinking. Oh, that you know, so I'm going to get some of the money. And we go foot. I'm going to be. 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 And you go to 5,000. Without knowing, could there is no future there. into the secret place. He went into prayer. He prayed to God. And God guided him. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there are so many good things on earth that will lure you away from the direction of God. Yes. If I, you know, I, I, I was praying yesterday and the Lord said something to me. And I want to share that with you. 
the Lord says, He says, He says, Don't go for what you desire. I was like, Wow. Then he added, You know what he said? He said, Alistair, don't pray for your desires. Quickly, I opened my Bible. I went to Mark 11, verse 24. I said, Father, is it you talking with Satan? Because the Bible here says, whatsoever things he desire, when he pray. So, how come he say to me, I must not pray for what I desire? When the Bible says, pray for what you desire, who is talking? I spent a lot of time in my closet. Who is talking? Why, why should I not pray for what I desire? Then God says, this is not for the senior class. This is for babies. If you are matured in Christ, if you have grown up in Christ, you don't pray for what you desire. No. You pray for what God desires to see in your life. Amen. One time Paul said, I want to go to Asia. God says, no. Stop. Paul said, but there are many sinners. I want to preach. God said, no, 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 don't go there. And Paul said, okay. Where should I go? God said, I'll tell you where you should go. See, by the level of maturity, you will not see your own thing. The good sweet you, my Lord, no. I give you what I desire, not what you desire. So you have to grow up to a stage whereby you no longer pray for your desires. You do not pray for God's desires to happen. I discovered that God has got so many desires that he wants us to do, yet we are not interested in the desires of God. We are interested in our own desires. We are busy chasing after our own desires, mm -hmm. not his desires. And that has been a problem. I want a Mercedes Benz. Does God want to have it? I want this job. Does God want you to have it? All the praise. I want this. I want this. I decided, are you a baby? The Holy Ghost said to me, are you a baby? He says, babies desire everything. And they cry to the mother, the mother will give them. He says, look at your child. You, you know, in the beginning, I'm born my share, na Alvin. I know it's problem after problem. Chase it out like in a color. I want this. I want this. I'll drink. I want drink it. Okay. I want sweet is. I want ice cream is. I want chicken slice. I want you. He wants everything in there. He is telling you his desires. But in me as a father, I have got my own desires for him. What are my desires? If you ask me, I'll tell you. Number one, I desire Alvin, Alvin's school fees to be paid. I desire Alvin to have shoes and uniform to go to school. I desire Alvin to have bread and sata. Yeah, I would have a bubble gum. Then I have a bubble gum. Then I have No, 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 no. No, 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 my bubble gum. It's not just my bubble gum to get out of school here. That is what we do. I am sure that 99% of people in this house, we are chasing after our own desires. Yes, yes. Now, God said to me, when I was in prayer, He said something to me. He said, when you are chasing after your own desires, I am not able to guide you. He says, if you go after what you want, I am not able to guide you. Then God showed me one time. I had an all-night prayer. Oh, let me show you. Let me tell you this. Ah, I wasted my time. 
at one time, 